The southern bluefin tuna is one of the most valuable fish on earth. The bluefin is famous for their high fat content which makes for sensational sashimi and every year the first bluefin of the season can earn millions in the Japanese fish markets. There are three species of bluefin tuna, the Atlantic, which is the largest, the Pacific and the Southern bluefin tuna. Of the three, the Southern bluefin tuna is the most widely distributed across the Indian and Pacific oceans. In fact, they're even showing up in the Atlantic of South Africa. They undertake one of the greatest migrations on earth, traveling from their only known spawning grounds in the Indian Ocean off Northwestern Australia. Traveling down Australia's west coast, they branch out, some risking it and swimming out into the Indian Ocean, where they travel all the way to South Africa. But sadly, many fall victim to illegal fishing on that journey. The rest turn east, the immature fish move into the Great Australian Bite, while the bigger fish move on to Victoria and Tasmania to feed up after spawning. They don't stop there and continue their migration into the Pacific, up Australia's east coast, as well as across to New Zealand, and then turn around and do it all again. Along with species, the southern bluefin tuna can reach 40 years of age and grow to more than 220 kilos. They don't reach maturity till at least eight to 10 years of age. This is incredibly slow growing for a pelagic fish compared to other tunas like yellowfin, which can reach full maturity in a couple of years and live for around seven years max, but still reach 100 kilos. Like all tuna, bluefin are endothermic, which means they can actually regulate their body temperature a couple of degrees warmer than the surrounding water. While bluefin grow into apex predators, they still suffer heavy predation by sharks like mako sharks, as well as whales, particularly pilot whales. Matuta tuna, however, often team up with dolphin sharks and even whales, creating feeding frenzies, which are easily located under the diving seabirds. Commercial fishing started targeting bluefin way back in the 1950s. Initially, they were chased by the Japanese fleets, but the Aussie crews soon started polling them for the canned tuna industry as well, before moving on to Perth Sailing. Global catches increased dramatically to 77,000 tonnes in 1961. But by the 70s, there were obvious cracks in the fishery and the Japanese industry introduced a voluntary closure on the spawning grounds. Scientists warned of full exploitation of the species as the fishery continued to decline. In 1991, tuna farming started in Port Lincoln. With little signs of improvement, the Commission for Conservation of SBT was formed in 1994. In 1998, the WCU listed the SBT as critically endangered. It wasn't until 2006 when Japan was caught out for overfishing did we see dramatic and instant improvements in bluefin stocks. Stocks were as low as 5% in 2010, but by 2017 had improved to more than 13% and it is continuing to improve which is thanks to robust research, including gene tagging. Bluefin were literally unknown for recreational anglers throughout the 80s and 90s due to commercial overfishing. In fact, it wasn't until 2006 that they started fishing them, which coincided exactly with the Japanese being caught out for overfishing. And instantly, bluefin fishing exploded in Australia. Since then, as stocks continue to grow, it has created a cult following amongst anglers. You're not going to believe this. Yeah, right we up. just started. Look at this, right, right a triple. The guys, we put the gear back out and everything went off again. And now we've got it on a bloody triple. Can you believe it? Look at it. The guys are going off. Fish caught range in size from just a few kilos to more than 150 kilos. The southern bluefin tuna are so prolific these days it's possible to catch 100 kilo fish off Victoria's shipwreck coast, under the cliffs off Tasmania's Eagle Hawk Neck, and out wide in the Eastern Australian Current off New South Wales, which really highlights just how well this species is recovering. 
Today, the SBT is one of the most tagged fish for the New South Wales Game Fish Tagging Program. Opportunistic feeders, bluefin can be caught by a variety of techniques, but trolling is by far the most commonly employed and effective. Trolling a mix of skirted lures and deep dive in hard bodies, like Halco Laser Pros, works an absolute treat on this surface feeding fish. Today, commercial fishing is highly regulated with specific quotas and every fish is counted to ensure it stays sustainable. In fact, on longline vessels in Australian waters, they are rigged with cameras to ensure strict compliance. As a result, it has created a fishery that focuses on quality, not quantity, and every fish is processed and chilled within minutes of being landed. The story of the southern bluefin tuna is truly a remarkable one and a rare good news story for our oceans. Fished almost to commercial extinction, the species has begun to rebound and is continuing to show signs of improvement. This is much in thanks to teamwork between nations that has played a key role in the success of the species recovery. And whilst it's far from perfect, there is no denying the success so far. Sport fishers have also played an important role in establishing the Tuna Champions Program, which promotes good fishing practice, minimising waste, to ensure SBT stocks continue to improve for the future.